Good day. Today we're going to learn how to burn a DVD with your computer. First we open a DVD drive by pushing a physical button and then we're putting a blank DVD. After inserting the blank DVD, making sure that it's not catching on the side of the tray, hit the hardware button or push the tray in. It'll take approximately 20 seconds for it to fully read the DVD disc. And after it reads the DVD disc, a menu should pop up that would say, do you want to burn DVD? This is the autoplay option. It's present in most of the computers these days. Now, there's the blank DVD option. We want to select on the burn file to disk, and from there you can double click or single click should work too. You can give a disk title, trading video, and then we can select the with a CD or DVD player. That's how the disk will be used. Once you're done selecting and creating a disk title, head on next. Over here, these are the files we burned before on the previous um, on the uh, PowerPoint presentation. Here, we want to just select new files so we can delete the temporary files so that we have a blank slate. Or else you'll just simply burn the same videos over again. So remember, delete temporary files to clear the slate. Once it's cleared and you're ready to burn new files, click on the folder or any folder that you want to burn files from. Make sure that you can see both windows and select the file that you want to record. Now on the PowerPoint it says to hold down the control button and also you can then hit the left mouse button click to select multiple files in this manner. That's one way to do it. The other way is to hold down shift and click on a file and then you will go from the previous starting selection to where you click on next if you hold down shift. At any point if you release the shift or the control and click on any other file or location it should unselect the files. So we're going to select 52, 54, 60, and 75. You see that here we have four items selected down the bottom. The total size is 256 megabytes. And um, there's other information down here that you can probably glean from. But the maximum that the DVD can hold is 4.4 gigabytes. It will tell you if you selected too much. And when that happens, you'll have to reduce some of the files. For example, if we were to go into videos of my trip to Taiwan and we select multiple files, here we have selected 21 files and if you select for more details you can see that here we have selected 2.06 gigabytes. If we want to select more we can 4.90. Now that's a little too much and if we were to drag too much onto the DVD it'll tell you there's not enough space on a DVD drive. We don't want to do that so we will select less files by going back and selecting less. Now Unfortunately, the bottom is not allowing me to see the detail clearly every single time. I'm not sure why it's not letting me see all the details every single time. But basically, you want the size to be less than 4.4 gigabytes. Once you have that selected, drag and drop into the folder for burning DVDs. Now, it's going to copy the items because it's a temporary file to be burned. Once that has been completed, you can then click on Burn to Disk. This is going to take a little while. You click on More Detail to see how it's going.
Again, there are many different ways of selecting files. If you would like, you can drag your mouse to select multiple files in this manner. You can also use your keyboard to go up and down, holding down Shift and selecting files. Many different ways. Another way to sort the files, you can click on date to sort the files, name, type, size, all of those can be sorted to have the best view possible. Once you have moved the files over to the temporary file folder for burning DVD, click on burn to disk and it will tell you what the disk title is going to be and what the recording speed will be. Now closing the wizard after the file has been burned can be clicked so that you don't have to click on finish. However, we're just going to leave that be. And once you click on next, you will start burning the data files to the disk. And as before shown, when it is completed, simply click on finish, take the disk out of the disk drive, remember to close the bay, and that should do it. Remember to always label the disk because once you have many many disks without any labels you'll be hard to find. I've had that problem before. That is for the presentation. Have a good day.